Well, here we are, it's very nearly Christmas, so I thought we could have a seasonal flavour to the video. Holly, ivy, ivy-like flowers and ivy hybrids. Coming from the Fatsia japonica, we come across hybrid between the Fatsia and the ivy. And it's a really lovely, variegated, large-leafed ivy plant called Fatshedera anamica. And under the cycad, I've got an ivy from the Canary Islands with very big, bold, bold leaves. Now, here we're meeting another Pseudopanax from New Zealand. This has a more tree-like form and hence its name, Pseudopanax arboreus. It has the same flowers as the Pseudopanax letus that we looked at in a previous video and form quite attractive bunches. Nice purple colour, and picking up on the purple colour is the continual flowering of Sestrum Cretan purple, which we saw in the previous video, and which in fact has been flowering for several months now, and I think they make quite a nice pairing actually. Coming down the path I'm struck by the wonderful seeds of the cordyline. Glowing white and bright against the blue sky. Memories of the wonderful sweet scent that they had when they were flowers. Coming away from the cordial line, we come across the ivy-like flowers of the Chinese rice paper plant, Heteropanax papyrifer. Come down the path. and come out of the gate. Through the gate is a chopped down holly, native holly, but with yellow berries. Makes a change from the red berried form and not so interesting for the birds just yet. Having seen the hybrid between the Fatsia and the Ivy, here indeed is the Fatsia. And my goodness, look at those insects going. Last orders, please. But the ordinary Fatsia has lovely leaf and the flowers are really rather attractive being white and they seem to shine out in the slightly shady place where I have this particular plant and next to it is an upright Schefflera which again does have ivy-like flowers the rhododendron leafed Scheffler, but not flowering at the moment. It's got this uh, amazing patterned stem where all the scars of the old leaves have fallen off and left a mark, which is quite 
intriguing, really. Coming along the end of the long border, another plant with ivy-like flowers, rather prickly stems, as I've discovered standing up suddenly after weeding underneath it and pronging the top of my head. This is Callopanax pictus. And in fact, the uh, flowers are now turning to seed. I must say the Callopanax seed heads have wonderful patterns, intricate, something you don't really notice as you walk past, but do bear close inspection. And here you can see the full extent of the chestnut leafed holly, which is grown incredibly tall. I planted several in a row as a windbreak when this was just a field open to the gales from the sea beyond. And I got them from Lady Anne Palmer at Rosemore all those years ago. This is the chestnut leafed holly because the leaves look a bit, I suppose, like a sweet chestnut leaf. And they're quite large. Coming through this slightly wooded area, I want to show you a couple of hollies down here. This one has got very broad leaves with a very fine toothing around the edge. This is Ilex latifolia. Well, interestingly, this is a male plant. Hollies are male or female. Uh, and it's flowering. But uh, flowering in December seems odd. Maybe it's early, late, or just having a second go. And if you think it looks vaguely familiar to something you've just seen, then you're absolutely right. Because this is one of the parents of the holly chestnut leaf, which we've just seen. The other one being our native holly. Well, coming round from Ilex lactifolia, we come across a very tall, now, specimen of one of my favorite hollies, the camellia leaf holly. Ilex camellifolia, which has glossy entire leaves, which do look a bit like camellia leaf. This I planted many years ago. Coming away from the uh, Ilex latifolia, I just cannot help but dwell a bit on the twisted trunk of this exocorda. Now, it's appeared in various <laughs> videos because I really feel the trunk is worth looking at. I mean, obviously, late spring and early summer, it's full of white flowers. But uh, this trunk is just amazing with its twisting and turning patterns. Now, in a previous video, I'm afraid I misidentified it, and I'm sure there were lots of you who said, that can't be the right name. Uh, so I now have to correct myself, because I got confused with another exocorda which I planted elsewhere in the garden, and which has since died. But I do keep coming back to this amazing trunk. Coming through here, I see the uh, other make of Fatsia that I grow here called Fatsia polycarpa, which has slightly thinner, more elegant leaves. And it is also flowering 
This Sphatsia comes from Taiwan, where it is actually threatened in the wild because of habitat loss. Not so uh, large a flower as the Japanese version, but more refined, I would say. Working our way up from the Ilex and the Exocorda. We're passing the uh, blue bench backed by Acer Conspicuum Phoenix with its fantastic red stems and at the back the weeping cashmere cypress Cupressus cashmeriana. The blue of the bench is uh, obviously quite fashionable colour. Having been promoted quite a lot by Alan Titchmarsh when he was presenting Gardener's World. And I remember the late John Brooks, the garden designer, also promoting this colour in every part of every garden. So I felt I was in good company. But I do feel it does uh, show up nicely and contrast nicely with the stems of the Acer. When I said in my last video that some of the grevilleas in this garden never stop flowering, well, Here's another a case in point, which goes on flowering all through the year, including the winter. And I can hear some buzzing and I can see some bees working on it. Whereas the fatsia seem to attract flies, not so good. These are presumably our honeybees, which are attracted to this Flowering Grevillea. It really is very attractive to bees all through the year. And over here we have a very large leafed holly from the Azores. Not him, no. Big bold leaves, and it did have berries before the birds stripped them off. There are two here, as if to prove the point. From the uh, large bold leaves of Ilex parado, and beneath it a tiny, rather sweet holly called Ilex Meservi Little Rascal. Now, I'm being rather a big rascal here because I will show you this sort of hole in what should be a nice rounded shrub. And that's because it is so small, <laughs> I keep bashing into it with my ride-on mower which doesn't do the ultimate shape much good. Coming down under the oak trees and by the Turkish tent is a, a lovely holly, I feel, which is more or less smooth leafed and has some berries. But the main thing is I've clipped them in this pair into bobbly standards to lend an air of formality to the outlook from the Turkish tent. From this lovely holly, for there it is a lovely holly. All it remains for me to say is thank you very much for watching the videos. I hope you have a happy Christmas and that we'll meet again in the new year.